The new season has arrived and with it, new builds. Curious? Stay tuned and learn more. Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Pro Guides for another Korean builds video for the very first patch of season 13. My name is Crumbs and I'll be the host running you through the new builds you need to watch out for in all five roles. Get your season started off on the right foot and let's run through the video. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future content just like this. First off, let's talk about a Gragas top build that's gaining popularity. It's a mix of tankiness and damage that really adds some notable kill pressure to his gameplay. You'll want to run Ignite with this setup as your EN ultimate can help you escape from most ganks. Otherwise, if your opponent is low, you can instead aggressively look for a trade in the 1v2. Not too bad, and if you're already far ahead, you might even be able to kill both enemies or instead take one kill and still manage to get away. First off, the runes are Grasp of the Undying, Demolish, Second Wind, Revitalize, Biscuit Delivery, Cosmic Insight, Double Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune of Choice. These runes provide an extra boost to your early game, giving you the combat power you need to come out even further ahead from trades. Even one hit trades with Grasp of the Undying and your W should be enough to make your opponent second guess whether or not they actually want to fight you. Otherwise, make use of your Q and W to poke enemies down when they want to farm. For items, build Demonic Embrace, Ionian Boots of Lucidity, Heart Steel, Zhonya's Hourglass, Abyssal Mask, and Rabadon's Death Cap. With Heart Steel, you'll gradually get tankier over the course of the game, but also benefit heavily from its generous bonus stats. It provides an immense amount of bonus health, and the ability haste should serve to increase your damage output and utility throughout the course of teamfights. Next up, we have a build for Udir Top. You'll want to take Summoner Ghost as this will allow you to stay relevant in longer fights rather than flashing in and then finding it difficult to catch up to enemy ranged carries, you'll be able to persistently chase them down with a massive movement speed advantage. The shorter cooldown is the nice cherry on top. For runes, take Grasp of the Undying, Shield Bash, Second Wind, Unflinching, Presence of Mind, Last Stand, Double Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune of Choice. Shield Bash and Grasp provide you with some impactful early game bonus damage that should help you dominate the laning phase and come out ahead by the mid game. His items are Demonic Embrace, Boots of Swiftness, Heart Steel, Sunfire Aegis, Force of Nature, and Death Stance. Again, Heart Steel provides a huge boost in durability, and you'll still deal a notable amount of damage with this defensive build with the help of Demonic Embrace and Sunfire Aegis. The longer the fights, the more damage you'll gradually dish out. That covers top lane builds. Take a look at the screen for a quick recap of them. With the new season starting up, now's the best time to go ahead and contact the coach over at ProGuides.com. Our high low staff can help you quickly improve and rank up this season, so if you're serious about improving, make sure to reach out to one of them as they've already helped countless students hit the ranked goals. That said, let's talk about the jungle next. Our very first jungle build is for Talon. It's a really popular one in Korea at the moment for the amount of durability, lifesteal, and damage it provides. Ultimately, you get so much out of it without really sacrificing his one-shot potential. For runes, take Conqueror, Triumph, Legend Alacrity, Last Stand, Futures Market, Cosmic Insight, Double Adaptive Force, and Armor. Futures Market is a little underrated, and you should definitely take it on jungle Talon. You do have to sacrifice a little gold to make the earlier purchases, but it's absolutely worth it. Having access to those power spikes faster lets you continue to snowball harder and harder. If you're having a good game, you'll consistently hit power spikes faster than your opponents, even if they're slightly ahead. Now for items, start with Moss Stomper Seedling. From there, you'll want to build Ravenous Hydra, Ionian Boots of Lucidity, Gore Drinker, Death Stance, Cerulius Grudge, and Moth Malmordius. Again, it provides plenty of sustain, durability, and damage. Talon's innate mobility is enough for him to dip in and out of fights and look for an opportunity to one-shot the enemy's backline. Next for the jungle is a build for Jarvan. It's a bruiser build that makes him not only tanky, but also provides him with lifesteal to survive even longer. His shields, combined with the defensive stats and healing, will help him lead the charge, deal plenty of damage, and become practically unkillable. For runes, take Conqueror, Triumph, Legend Tenacity, Last Stand, Futures Market, Cosmic Insight, Double Adaptive Force, and Armor. For items, start with Moss Stomper Seedling, and follow it up with a Tiamat Rush. By the end game, you should have the following build. Defensive Boots, Heart Steel, Ravenous Hydra, Sunfire Aegis, Death Stands, and Spirit Visage. 
Finishing up this Spirit Visage is huge as you'll heal even more while also hitting that nice MR and health spike from it. We're done with the jungle build, so again, we'll throw them up on the screen for you to review. Take whatever notes you need and let's head into the mid lane next. Heartsteel is starting to shine as the next potentially OP item. We're even seeing mid lane Viego players use it. It provides an insane amount of tankiness and also deals significant amounts of damage. As this is a bruiser build, you'll have no problem making use of Heartsteel's effect as fights will naturally last long enough for you to activate it. For runes, take Conqueror, Triumph, Legend Tenacity, Last Stand, Second Wind, Unflinching, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune of Choice. The items are Blade of the Ruined King, Defensive Boots, Heartsteel, Death Stance, Sterax Gauge, and Wit's End. From the start, you'll deal high damage with the help of Blade of the Ruined King. From there, you're gonna build a mix of tankiness and damage. By the end game, you'll still prove to be a lethal threat, all while being super tanky and having plenty of healing to survive through longer fights. Neela is another champion we're beginning to see more of in the mid lane. As most mid laners need some time to scale up, Neela has no problems going through the early game. She has a pretty good wave clear, which only gets stronger with the help of Tiamat and Ravenous Hydra. It's also difficult to kill her as her elusive and defensive kit naturally provides protection for her. To make things even harder, you want to run Barrier to give you a chance to heal up and also make use of the last stand rune while you're low. That said, take the following runes. Conqueror, Triumph, Legend Bloodline, Last Stand, Second Wind, Revitalize, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune of Choice. I'd actually suggest taking a flat resistance for your respective matchup. You'll scale just fine without running health. For the items, build Ravenous Hydra, Berserker's Greaves, Immortal Shield Bow, Bloodthirster, Infinity Edge, and Death Stance. Combined with her runes, you're looking at a ton of healing and with the help of Barrier in the late game, you should have no problem surviving as long as you're able to avoid crucial crowd control and continue dealing damage. Before moving on, let me bring up our question of the day. What are your goals for this season? I personally want to learn and get really good at a couple of new champions. Neela is one of them, especially because her kit brings so much to the table. Let me know your answers in the comments below and let's continue the video. Well, that covers the mid lane builds, so we'll throw them up on the screen for you. Save those, and next up, let's run through a jungle and mid lane combo build. For the combo, it's probably one you've seen in the past, but has recently proven itself to be extremely powerful as of late. Zillion mid and Hecarim jungle are a devastating duo that sport an extremely high win rate on the Korean server. The amount of utility and mobility they bring is oppressive and allows them to open up games with insane pick making potential. It is impossible to avoid and engage from them as Zillion is able to speed up Hecarim and let him go loose. He can throw on a bomb to increase the threat of that initial burst damage or otherwise save it to try and stun his enemies with a double bomb combo off of Hecarim's initial engage. That said, let's run through the builds. For Hecarim's setup, take the runes Conqueror, Triumph, Legend Tenacity, Last Stand, Nimbus Cloak, Celerity, Double Adaptive Force, and Armor. His items are Ravenous Hydra, Ionian Boots of Lucidity, Jaxxor the Protean, Man Immune, Force of Nature, and Death Stance. On Zillion, you want to take Summon Airy, Mana Flow Band, Transcendence, Scorch, Perfect Timing, Cosmic Insight, Double Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune. For items, build Crown of the Shattered Queen, Ionian Boots of Lucidity, Archangel Staff, Cosmic Drive, Ravidon's Deathcap, and Zonya's Hourglass. A huge benefit of this build is that it provides plenty of power with some defensive options through Crown and Zonya's. You'll very ever rarely need to cast your ultimate on yourself, unless you're specifically trying to bait something. As a result, you can save the ultimate for Hecarim, letting whoever is playing them go crazy. They can play as aggressively as they want with very few repercussions. And that's it for the duo build, so let's move on to the bottom lane to wrap up the video. First up, we've got a build for Swain. Most players try to maximize their mobility here by taking both Flash and Ghost. You do lose a little bit of combat power early because of this, but starting from level 6, the mobility advantage is massive as you can indefinitely drain your opponent's health bars with his ultimate. Moving on to the runes, take Conqueror, Presence of Mind, Legend Tenacity, Last Stand, Mana Flow Band, Scorch, Double Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune. It's straightforward and Conqueror pays off hard during long fights. Another reason you want both Ghost and Flash later is it'll help you chase down foes and deal the most damage possible. You need to deal damage to survive longer. For items, build Rhylai's Crystal Scepter, Sork Shoes, Jack Show, Demonic Embrace, Rabadons, and Zonyas. 
This build provides plenty of durability for you to jump into the middle of fights, but also provides you with a ton of AP to dish out insane damage as well. Finally, we have a build for Support Set, which has made a comeback in Korean solo queue. It's currently used as a counterpick to melee enemy supports. He's plenty durable and deals enough damage early on to scale up and eventually act as a powerful tank for his team. Four runes take Glacial Augment, Hextech Flash, Futures Market, Cosmic Insight, Nimbus Cloak, Celerity, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and Armor. Glacial Augment makes Setsy much more threatening and the damage reduction can really come in handy during fights at all stages of the game. Moving on to items, build Steel Shoulder Guards, Dead Man's Plate, Boots of Swiftness, Radiant Virtue, Anathema's Chains, and Sunfire Aegis. It's a full tank build that still provides plenty of utility. He can look to engage with the extra movement speed from Dead Man's and Boots of Swiftness, while Radiant Virtue serves to significantly aid him and his teammates during fights. Thank you so much for watching the video. Be the first to hear about any news, giveaways, or events we host in the future, joining our Discord community through the link found in the description. As always, good luck on the rift, and may the LP gods smile down upon you.